In this video, we're going to look at more proofs, especially the proofs that involve parallel lines. As a quick review, we have these statements for our proofs that we can put as reasons. Of course, if parallel, then corresponding angles are congruent. And as a reminder, corresponding angles is if you have two parallel lines cut by a transversal. Angle 1 and angle 2 would be an example of corresponding angles because they're both on the top and the right of the top of the parallel line, right of the transversal. So those would be congruent. Um, if parallel alternate interior angles, 3 and 2 would be an example of alternate interior. A way you can check alternate interior is the Z trick. You can draw a Z along the parallel line and the transversal. And whatever, whatever angles the Z makes, those are your alternate interior angles. Reflexive is if something reflects on itself. Vertical angles would be 3 and 1. Those would be congruent. Bisector is something that cuts either an angle or a segment in half. Midpoint cuts a segment in half and perpendicular makes right angle. So let's go ahead and look at two proofs that involve parallel lines. Given AE is parallel to BD, so it's marked with arrows here, which means parallel, not congruent necessarily. AE is congruent to BD, and angle E is congruent to angle D. So knowing that these two lines are parallel and cut by a transversal, you know that angle EAB, this angle right here, is congruent to angle DBC because they are corresponding angles. They're both above the transversal, AC, and to the right of their parallel line. So you can say these two triangles are congruent by angle, side, angle, angle, side, angle. So there's our pre-write, and let's go ahead and write the final copy of the proof. So we got our given AE is parallel to BD. We also have AE is congruent to BD, and that's in the given. Notice those are separate givens. And angle E is congruent to angle D. So how many congruent statements do I have? I have one, two. So I need one more to get my ASA, and that comes from the parallel line. I can say angle EAB is congruent to angle DBC. And that's from the reason from the previous page. If parallel, then corresponding angles are congruent. I believe that was the top reason from the last page. So now I have a third congruent statement, so I can join them together. And I can say what it says at the end of the proof. Triangle AEB is congruent to triangle BDC by ASA congruence. All right, I want you to pause the video and try this one on your own. All right, let's see how you do it here. Let's do a pre-write or rough draft by marking it up. Angle F is congruent to angle H. FG is parallel to JH. So I can try the Z trick because I have a transversal cutting through both of these parallel lines. If I highlight the parallel line, the transversal, and the other parallel line, it makes a Z, as you can see. So the angles made by the Z are angle FGJ right here and angle HJG right there. So I have two angles congruent. And I also have a common side. So that side is going to be congruent to itself because it's reflexive. So it looks like I have angle, angle, side here because the side is not included between the angles. So now let's go ahead and write our givens. Angle F is congruent to angle H given FG parallel to JH given and anytime we have a reflexive or a vertical angle we put that on the top line so in this case I have a reflexive side so I say JG is congruent to JG and that's because it is reflexive so now how many congruent statements do I have? Well, I have one, two, so I need a third one, which will come from here. We established that that would be angle FGJ is congruent to angle HJG. And that was the second reason on the first page. If parallel, then alternate interior angles are congruent. So I'm going to take these three statements. And I join them together to say my final proof at the end that triangle FGJ 
is congruent to triangle HJG. And that, of course, is by AAS congruence. Don't forget that every box has to have something written under it to prove it's true.